Hello, lovely language learners. Welcome back to my channel and my series on mistakes native English speakers make. We've talked about egg corns, malapropisms, and mondegreens so far in the series, so now it's time for spoonerisms. And yes, native English speakers make mistakes. I was calling malapropism malapropism earlier, and I think it's malapropism. But let's get to spoonerisms. A spoonerism is a speech phenomenon in which the initial parts of a group of words that commonly go together are transposed or swapped or mixed up. This usually happens accidentally, and like many of the other linguistic mistakes we have covered, can be quite funny. The resulting phrase is often made up of words that really do exist, making it all the more amusing. To give you some examples right away, some commonly cited examples are blushing crow rather than crushing blow, or fighting a liar in place of lighting a fire, or keys and parrots instead of peas and carrots. The word spoonerism actually has nothing to do with spoons. The term is named after the British clergyman and educator William Archibald Spooner, who lived from 1844 to 1930. Apparently, Spooner made so many mistakes that we now call Spoonerisms during his orations or lectures that even while he was still alive, the term came into popular usage. A couple of cute mistakes he made was saying something was a fit little bunny instead of a little bit funny, and saying something was a blushing crow instead of a crushing blow, which I think I said earlier. Those are funny, but apparently Spooner did not think it was funny that the term Spoonerism was named after him. He would be rolling in his rave if he learned of how much fun we have with Spoonerisms today. Rolling in your grave means angry, even though you're dead. As it happens when you swap or exchange sounds between a couple of words in a phrase, a Spoonerism is an interesting kind of mix-up. There are unintentional Spoonerisms that don't make sense, such as goys and burls instead of boys and girls. There are also Spoonerisms that create new and funny meanings, such as better nate than lever instead of better late than never. You can also have what I have personally coined or named a double Spoonerism. I don't know if I'm the first to think of this term, but I like it. For example, you could say dock the wog for walk the dog, but I've often caught myself saying wog the dock. That's a double switch. You can also use Spoonerisms intentionally or on purpose. One reason I personally do this is so that I can swear without sounding like I'm swearing. I often say fluster cuck instead of cluster uh, or knucking futs instead of uh, nuts or no bucking furries instead of no uh, worries or miserable mastered instead of miserable bastard. That last one is less offensive to me. Spoonerisms are also used intentionally for literary or comedic effect. There's a book called Stoop Nagel's Tale is Twisted, Spoonerisms Run Amok by Keen James that retells fairy tales using spoonerisms. Chapters include Beeping Sluty for Sleeping Beauty and Prinderella and the Synths, Cinderella and the Prince. Another book called The Rails I Tote, The Tales I Wrote, by Christopher Manson has 45 Spoonerism cartoons for readers to enjoy trying to decipher or figure out, such as bee tags for tea bags. Yet another book called Runny Babbit, A Billy Sook, 
Bunny Rabbit, a silly book, appears to relish or enjoy Spoonerisms. A comedy skit called Rindersella, as opposed to Cinderella, appeared on the TV show Hee Haw many years ago. I'll link to the video below, but here's a clip uh, from the end for you to enjoy. The style of the more is this. If you go to a Bancy Fall and you want to have a Pransom Hence Lol and Thub with you, don't forget to slop your dripper. <laughs> Did you understand that? If you like dirty humor without saying anything dirty, I'll put a link below to a stand-up comedy version of Rindersella by Wayne Fleming below. Would you like some examples of Spoonerisms? Well, here you are. But note that I've changed the spelling of entire words sometimes so that the mistakes make some sense and are funnier. Cognitive psychologists like to study phenomena like spoonerisms because of what they say about how our brains construct language. Early 20th century psychologists believed that language was produced in our brains one word at a time. They thought that each word acted as a stimulus to produce another word. But now, Experts believe, through study of our Spoonerisms, that we produce language in clumps or chunks rather than one word at a time. Spoonerisms are actually not random mistakes. They follow a set of rules. When two sounds are transposed or switched between two words, they tend to always be sounds that belong in the same positions. For example, the beginning of one word almost never exchanges with the end of another. The close association your brain makes between two words, such as dog and house, indicates that your brain chose those words together as a unit, rather than one at a time. Why do we make Spoonerisms then? It's because as we construct language, our brain builds a frame for what we are going to say before we choose the actual words that will go into that frame. When we say a phrase correctly, it's because our brain was able to create the frame and the sounds of the words that go into the frame at the same time. When we're not successful at coordinating the frame and the words, spoonerisms happen. Often this breakdown might be the result of an external or internal stimulus that interferes. Maybe you're distracted, or maybe you're simply tired. However, be careful. Mixing up words isn't always a laughing matter. It could also be one of the early warning signs of Alzheimer's disease. But it's true that we all mix up words. Chances are you have made a Spoonerism in your own language. Comment below if you remember any. And if you have ever made a Spoonerism in English, congratulations. Perhaps that means you are chunking your language now instead of thinking about each word you want to say individually in English. This is a good sign of increased fluency. Like 
egg corns, malapropisms, and mondegreens. Spoonerisms are cases where you get the words wrong, but they are different from each other. So here's a summary for review. Egg corns happen when you switch or swap homophones in phrases, such as spelling here, here, H-E-R-E, -E, instead of H-E-A-R. Malapropisms happen when you substitute a similar sounding word for another, such as he's the pineapple of politeness instead of he's the pinnacle of politeness. Mondegreens happen when you mishear words, usually in song lyrics, for example, when people hear sweet dreams are made of cheese instead of sweet dreams are made of this. And spoonerisms happen when you mix up the first sounds of words in a phrase, making new phrases such as the Lord is a shoving leopard instead of the Lord is a loving shepherd. Okay, my lovelies, I hope you've enjoyed the last four videos about linguistic slips that native English speakers make. Hopefully you will be able to avoid some of them now, but take heart or don't worry if you still make mistakes because native speakers of English make them too. So see you in the next video. Mork Sensei, signing out. Mwah.